Good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, I hope if you're at the Event Tech Awards last night, uh, you had a nice time and not got too much of a sore head. Uh, I do have a bit of a sore uh, throat this morning. I apologise, but uh, uh, we were busy winning Best uh, Technology Startup uh, at Lineup Ninja, so yay. So excuse the voice, sorry. Uh, right, here today to talk to you about event tech integration. Uh, but to start with, what on earth is uh, event tech integration? I assume you've got some idea, given that you've come to a talk with that title. But just to make sure we're all on the same page before we uh, dive in. <coughs> Fundamentally, integration, taking your data from one supplier and integrating it with another one to get the real value out of that and automate a lot of processes that you might be doing manually. Um, so just a couple of like existing examples. You might have your, um, like your association data in your CRM or your attendees from a previous year. Um, you might then want to run, say, a call for papers for your event, a call for speakers. So you've got all your association member data in your CRM, all the email addresses, names, uh, like biographical details. Then you want to invite them to speak at that call for papers. So potentially you've got an integration there to take that data, send out the invites, and uh, your call for papers company could uh, run that. Um, then also you've got this again, the data in the CRM. You want to send that through to your ticketing supplier. So you've got like who's coming, who needs tickets, who you want to hassle to like make sure they're paid. Again, take that data through to ticketing and then that through to registration on the day. And then again, you've got your mobile app for the event. So that might be data from your CRM. Take your data from registration, like who's come that day, uh, whether they've arrived, then they show up in the networking in the mobile app to say, oh, so-and-so's arrived, you've got an appointment with them at 10 o'clock, and that data can come from ticketing. And again, for like call for papers, so you have your sessions built, uh, your agenda planned, and that data to go through to mobile app. There are many, many different types of event data. It's just like a few concrete examples. Uh, here today to try and make sure your event tech integration doesn't end up like this. It's more like this. Uh, nice and smooth running, and not a uh, train uh, crashing into a river. Uh, before I want to go any further, uh, before I want to go further, I just need a quick glass of water. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, why am I here today? Why am I talking to you about event tech integration? I've worked in the tech industry for 20 years now. Uh, and worked uh, in my previous uh, employment for large blue chip companies uh, in the media industry, doing a lot of technical integrations between some of the world's largest broadcasters. So I've seen a lot of event, uh, a lot of technical integrations in my career, some successful, some not. Uh, so really here today to try and make sure that yours are a, um, a success. Um, <coughs> a lineup ninja. Uh, this is me and Joe, my co-founder. Um, we don't always wear matching shirts, but quite often we do. <laughs> um, yeah, we're Lineup Ninja, and for this event today, uh, we provided the call for papers and the gender management. So people proposed to talk at this event. I did myself to be here today. That data was reviewed, assessed, created, curated into a gender, and then integrated to other event tech partners to, for uh, you to view on the website and your mobile app and on the screens around the event. Um, so that's a little bit about me. And is this talk gonna get technical? No, right. but what I want to do is make sure that you know the right questions to ask your technical teams so that you feel equipped to make sure that you're going to get what you need to get. <laughs> Fundamentally, a successful integration is all about data. Uh, and in an event, you've got data comes in many, many different forms. As we were saying, registrations, ticketing, your agenda, like your membership association data, payments. And as you know, when you're organizing an event, and many of you will use Excel spreadsheets for this, um, you have loads and loads and loads of data. 
the thing to think about, the thing to think about when you're starting an integration is what does that data actually look like? like what is it specifically that your data um, represents? So for an example, uh, if we look at what's this uh, session here, the session has a title, a start time, a duration, uh, a day, a stage, a presenter, a theme, a topic, uh, like my bio photo. And all of that data has been necessary for this event to happen. Now, it sounds obvious that that data is necessary, but when you think about an integration, um, a lot of providers can have different ideas of the same thing. So somebody can say ticketing, and they mean like these particular components of it, and a different supplier will say, oh yeah, we can do a ticketing integration, but their data is actually different. So you need to think about how, what your specific parts of the data that you care about are when you go into thinking about an integration. Do I care about whether I'm able to, say for this event, whether I'm able to have a profile picture for the speaker? Is that important to me? If it is, make sure that when you're thinking about an integration, that they're able to do that for you. And they don't just say, okay, yeah, we can integrate your speaker data. Sure, but is it what you actually need? Have you gone through and done the due diligence on the, your, it's called like the shape of your data. Like, what does it look like? And um, have you been specific? And often, if you're in Excel at the moment, that's really just the columns on your Excel spreadsheet. Like, th these are the things that we need to know. Make sure you're explicit with your supplier uh, about that up front because that will save you a lot of time down the line. It's much easier to go into an integration clear with the question of, this is my data for the event, particularly if you've got data for a previous year, like share that data and say, this is what we're trying to achieve. Do that up front and make sure the vendor's able to see that and review it, and then they can commit early doors to achieving that. Coming in later towards your event when you're already really, like, you know, the event's coming up, like you've got a million and one things to do, the last thing you want to be doing is like looking at that integration and saying, oh, right, hang on, we needed this data, we needed that, we didn't have that. Make sure you're clear up front. Um, ultimately, think about your data as like a pipeline. Uh, where is the data entered? Who is inputting that? Uh, so say for uh, the speaker side of things, that's the, uh, for, for this event was the speakers themselves. They're the ones typing in that data. And then how do you want that to look to the people who are going to consume it at the event, to the attendees? What should it look like in the attendee experience? And just think about <coughs> who, are the, uh, who are the users of that data, like the speakers as they put the data in and the attendees as they see it. Are you clear on capturing the right data up front? Are you clear on the integration on how that's going to move through to the next system? And are you clear on how uh, it's going to look as an end result? Because if you are, then there's a great su chance you will be successful. But if you're not, and you just, and you like, say you're looking at, um, looking at the marketing for uh, like a product and say, okay, that does like speakers and that does registration and we can just connect them. If you don't go through and look at more detail, then it's easy to imagine that that will do what you need. But when it comes to the reality, then it might not. Uh, just need some more water, one sec, thank you. Right, just going to take a look at four different types of integrations. Um, I'm going to start with spreadsheets. It's something that's often overlooked in a technical uh, event. It's the ability to integrate vendors just using spreadsheets. You don't necessarily need a, like a complex technical integration with technical teams involved. Quite often it's viable to export data in Excel use your Excel uh, skills, and then import it into another vendor. That's great if you've got data from a previous event that you want to import, like previous speakers or previous uh, um, uh, attendees. Um, and it's good if you only need to refresh the data a couple of times. If your process is gather, like, um, gather speakers for the event, export that, and then import that into your uh, uh, agenda um, system. That's fine if you want to do it like once or twice. Obviously, after that, it becomes tedious. The, um, the really, the thing to look out for here is make sure that the, 
If you have two different vendors and you want to export and import, the formats will be different, so you will have to get your Excel skills out, do some mapping, uh, and get that data imported. Um, do ask your supplier whether they will do a bespoke import for you. Quite often they'll be willing to do that as a one-off, like create a, an importer, say these are the columns, we'll map that and get that into our system. So do, do ask them. Um, now, integration are called like a native integration, where two event, event tech firms have uh, integrated directly one to another. This is perhaps the most common integration type that you'll see out there. These are generally great, uh, and they part, because the businesses will generally have like a partnership agreement, they know how to work together, they've done it before, but do make sure that it covers your type of data. Again, it's easy to say, you look on a website and it says, oh yeah, we integrate with XYZ, make sure that that integration covers the type of data you want to integrate, because it might just cover ticketing when you wanted to uh, integrate speaker data, say. Check the integration actually exists, and isn't just marketing fluff on a website. Like, ask to see it in action, ask for existing clients who are using it, make sure that uh, it can do what you want. Um, if you've got two suppliers you want to integrate, then just ask them, uh, particularly if they think that it's a good market fit that they would be integrated, they might well be willing to work with you on that. Uh, it might cost you, but they might be able to do uh, they might be able to do something for you. Uh, particularly if they see a good business opportunity for uh, future clients, then they'll probably be able to give you a, uh, do some work for you at a uh, good price. Um, one of the, uh, um, an upcoming technology that's becoming more and more uh, popular um, over the last couple of years is uh, what I call an integration platform. Um, the, the two main players in events are Blender.io, who are here today. Uh, Nico was giving a talk on this stage uh, yesterday. They're, um, they're excellent. They're used for this event today. We partnered with them to take our data from speakers through to Blender, and that was sent on to uh, Grip the, uh, to power your uh, mobile apps. They're, the idea behind Blender is integrating companies that aren't natively integrated. So if you've got two suppliers and they don't have an existing relationship, Blender will be able to take that, do that integration for you. They have about 200 companies on their website and they can say, okay, we can take your data from say Lineup Ninja and we can do that into Grip for this event or there's uh, uh, Events Case are on there, uh, Event Mobi, um, but things like your CRM systems as well, Excel, Google Sheets, like, um, and it's a really good way to ingest data from your CRM as well, because there are a lot of CRM systems out there, and the chance that your supplier has a native integration with your CRM. If you use something common, like Salesforce, then there's a reasonable chance, but if you use something a little bit uh, less well-known, then they might not. But some, Blender might well have that integration, and then be able to take that data and put it into your supplier for you. Um, there's another company in the space called Zapier. Uh, they're a little different. Uh, Blender's uh, much more focused on the event space. They have a lot of knowledge. Thank you. They have a lot of knowledge in this. Uh, they have a lot of not, not sorry. Excuse me. They have a lot of knowledge in this space, and they're very good at helping you with that integration. So Zapier are much more self-service. They're really good, but you need to know a little bit more, like technically what's going on. Which if you've got a tech team, that's great. Uh, or if you're just a bit tech savvy, then that's great. Blender have a much more full service, they will be able to sort that out for you. Um, excuse me. Now, just one warning about these platforms. They're excellent. Um, and they have a lot of companies integrated, but again, check it covers your type of data. You go on the website and there's logos and logos and logos for the companies that they have that integration for. But again, just because they have an integration for that company, doesn't mean it covers your type of data. So check that if you want to do registrations, that it's registrations. Uh, again, speaker data. Ask to see what, um, ask to see what the data, um, actually let me just take a little step back. Each company on this integration platform can both provide and receive types of data. So we provide as Lineup Ninja, we provide uh, agenda data then another company needs to be able to receive agenda data for that integration to uh, be possible. So 
Um, you can see two logos, but it doesn't mean you can immediately do that integration. But again, they will be um, uh, able to work with you to achieve that. But it might take a little bit longer than you might think when you first see a couple of logos on the website and think, oh, great, I can take my data here, put it there. Again, check that it covers what you, uh, what you want to do. Don't just be wowed by the list of logos. But these are, it's really an interesting idea. It's starting to get traction, and it's one thing to look at if you've, uh, if you've not seen it before. Um, now, uh, it's, you might not think of this necessarily as an integration, but we'll talk a little bit about white labeling. Um, if you're not immediately familiar about white labeling, you know, the idea of taking one company's products, changing the brand on it, and selling it as part of a different product. Uh, when you buy your pet insurance from Sainsbury's, you're not buying it from Sainsbury's, you're buying it from somebody else, and they've just put Sainsbury's logo on their website. Um, now, you might not really think of that as an integration, and you shouldn't have to, but, um, but do be aware that things are happening behind the scenes to make that white labeling happen. So there is a technical integration there. Um, generally, these are very good quality, and a lot of work will have gone into that to make the white label happening, and things should just happen, and you don't need to care about it. Um, the, uh, the real advantage of getting a, like a white label product is it's easy to purchase, you've only got one PO to go through, and you've got like one neck to ring in the event that there's problems. You can go to your account manager at the, uh, the company that it's been delivered at, shout at them when it's not working, and they can fix it. Whereas if you're dealing with two different vendors, sometimes you can have a little bit of complexity on whose problem it is when that integration isn't working. Is it the source of the data? Is it the person receiving it? If it's white labeled, then uh, you shouldn't have that problem. But again, do check that it does what you expect. Like, make sure that you see up front, this is the data. I, I want to make sure I can get it from this system to this system. And uh, see it demoed. Um, so that's a quick thing about white labeling. GDPR, I'm sure we're all familiar with it, probably sick about hearing it. But it's really important when it comes to integrations. Ultimately, you as the event manager are the data controller for your uh, attendees, for your speakers, for all of the personal information that's happening about your event. That's great, but when you think about an integration, you're uh, connecting one data processor with another data processor. So you have to make sure that you have permission from your, um, permission from your um, what are called data subjects, so your speakers, your attendees, that you have their permission to share that data between these multiple data processors. It's easily done, just, but make sure you ask for that up front before you think, all right, I'll just take this data and move it around all over the place. So uh, just a few quick tips. As I mentioned about a thousand times, make sure you understand what your data is. This is just so important for it to be successful. Ask to see the integration in action up front, um, or make sure that you have a commitment on it to be delivered and make sure you see uh, it working. Remember the user experience and what's, who are the people that are looking at the data? Who's inputting it? Who's receiving it? And make sure that you don't create a really complex experience for your, um, uh, for your, uh, uh, for your speakers, for your attendees. Um, be patient with this kind of thing. Suppliers can often accommodate a lot of what you need, but you, uh, you know, they need enough time. Uh, as a tech guy, you know, we can do a lot of things, but we need notice about doing them. If, uh, if we know up front that something's needed, it's much more likely that that will be successful and ready in time for your event and for your integration to, uh, to flow nicely. Just a quick little bit about our integrations for Lined Up Ninja. I won't dwell on this too long, but we integrate with Guidebook, who are over there in the corner. We're at Events Case, who are over there. We integrate with Blender, who are here. I'm not sure where their stand is. We integrate with Grip, also here. We integrate also Identify, ID Loom, and Voxer. And for all of those, we take our, your agenda data that's come from your speakers and pass it through to one of these providers to deliver uh, an awesome uh, experience for your uh, event. So uh, like agenda apps or uh, Voxer do like polling and Q&A, uh, and but through to Blender and then potentially out to all kinds of different providers. Uh, so that's great. Thanks for listening. I hope that was uh, of interest and useful. Uh, so I'd like to say any questions? The, Oh, there we are. Right. Uh, what one piece of data would you say is key outside the obvious name and email? Uh, that's a good question. I think one thing that's really useful from our side is 
uh, we have an option to ask people when they're available up front. Uh, if when you're doing a call for papers, when is somebody available? Are they able to attend on both days of your event, one or other? Uh, and then taking that data, you can then make sure when you're planning your agenda that you know when people are available. Um, is the end result of the data customizable or is it a default output format? Uh, very much depends on your supplier. Some will export in uh, spreadsheets. Some will allow you to customize the column in that spreadsheet, choose the data uh, and choose different columns. Quite often, it'll just be a straight Excel export and you'll need to do what you want. Um, one, uh, one good export format, if you're thinking about an integration, is what's called JSON, which is J-S-O-N. Uh, and it's like a machine readable format of your data. And if you can get data in that format, you can take it from one supplier and say, OK, here, other supplier, please import this. And they will be able to do that much more effectively than importing from an Excel sheet because that data is designed to be read by a machine. Uh, does the integration go both ways, e.g. back into Salesforce? Uh, not ours, personally, uh, but that's something you can do with uh, Blender. So if you've got data, they can take your data and uh, push it into Salesforce and take it out from Salesforce. Um, how do you know if you can integrate with other systems? The, uh, you, how, how do you know? Ultimately, you need to talk to the suppliers and say, can you do this? Um, the question to ask often up front is, do you have an API, which stands for Application Programming Interface? And it's how two firms talk technically behind the scenes. If they have an API and it covers your type of data, then those firms will be able to uh, integrate easily. Uh, congratulations on your win. Thanks. Uh, brilliant. That's it. Well, I hope that was useful. Thanks for coming and enjoy the rest of your day.